Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for watching, tuning in, coming back, all that stuff. Hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are. And I'm sitting here playing with a photo in Luminar, and it's a night shot uh, that I took on a street in London. And I love shooting at night, uh, uh, at night in cities. Um, the problem, though, is that the lights and the color and the, all that kind of stuff just never really comes out right. It doesn't either come out A, how I remember it, or B, how I want it to look. So I'm always having to futz around in uh, software. Luminar is obviously my software of choice, but I'm always having to futz around to get what I want to get, right? Um, uh, or just to uh, restore it to what I think it ought to look like, even if I'm not doing a fantastic, you know, massive uh, change because it's like my um, creative desire to do so. Many times I'm just trying to make things look the way I sort of think they ought to look. And so that's what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to take control or take back control of your nighttime shots. And so let me show you the photo I'm with. That's this one here. Um, just a street in London and as I said at night, but you see these little purple lights and uh, these purple lights are casting a purple glow across the entire photo. So really the photo looks really purple. And, and I gotta be honest, like purple's my favorite color. I mean, I love purple, but I don't really want all my streets to be purple. I want it to look more realistic and I wanna grit, grit it up a little bit and uh, just maybe change some of the lighting. And so what I did in Luminar is I turned it into that. Um, you know, a lot warmer tones. I cooled off a lot of that purple uh, and brought back some contrast and some depth, I think, by adding structure and all that. So let me hop into the edits and we'll get into it right now. Okay, so here we are in the develop filter. Now, there's the photo before develop and there's the photo after develop. So I, I can't turn off develop, but I can show you the before and after. If you look at the menus, you can see I added some temperature, or I warmed it up, I should say, and added some contrast and a little bit of clarity. So not a massive difference, but I went from that, which is decidedly cool. I mean, the purple tones are really cool, and so I warmed it up a bit, so I'm already liking it. Uh, in fact, some people would do something like that and say, hey, I look, I like it a whole lot better. It looks more real, and it does, uh, but I think it needs some adjustments to the light, and so the next thing I do is get the tone filter, and that brought me to this step. Uh, what I did here is just smart tone. And so I went to 40, which is a decent amount. Let me show you before and after. Smart tone, if you drag it to the right to brighten the image, it brightens the dark spots, but it won't brighten the stuff that's already bright. So it's just, it's smart, right? It's just, literally, it's like one of the best things ever in Luminar, I love it. Um, so I went from there, and now I'm popping up some structure. So that was the next one. And I went about 50 on structure. And so let me show you that again. And that was a global adjustment. So there's before and there's after. I don't know how well you can tell in the video, but it basically, for me, um, it does crunch up a little bit of the detail, but that helps, in my opinion, helps to give the photo some depth. And so that's one of the reasons I like it. Um, and then I'm starting to, now I'm gonna address the colors. It's still too cool for me. I wanna warm it up and balance that out. And the best tool for that is color balance, which is probably why it's called that, because it helps you balance out the colors. Um, and if you haven't seen it, I've got a video uh, or two or three, I think, about color balance. So I highly recommend watching those if you haven't seen them before or if you've never used the filter, but it's incredibly powerful. So let me just show you what I did. I went to that, right? So there's the before color balance and the after. It looks like what I did is just add a temperature adjustment, but that's not really it at all. Um, um, I actually did add temperature adjustments, but I did it selectively. So let me show you. You have three boxes here, shadows, midtones, and highlights. Um, and what I did, again, this is not a full tutorial. I basically took the shadows more to the, the red on this first slider and to the yellow on the bottom slider. So basically, I'm getting away from the cyan and the blue, which are the cooler tones, and I'm moving towards those warmer, the yet, uh, reds and the yellows. Um, I didn't do anything in midtones, and then highlights, I did the same thing that I did in shadows, which is go away from the cyan to the red, which is gonna give me a warmer look in the highlights. And then on the yellow blue, I went away from the blue toward the yellow. Again, adding warmth to the highlights. And so overall color balance took me from a pretty purple image overall, which is very cool. Again, I said earlier, it's purple is a very cool color. It's very close to blue and indigo. So very cool. And now it's a lot warmer. I, I, I don't look at the photo now and say, ah, oh, it's way too purple. There's definitely some, so I think it's more realistic looking in terms of how the purple from the lights would fall on the streets and the side of the building, as opposed to, let me show you the before, where pretty much everything is purple, right? So I think we fixed that. Um, a couple more filters. I, I didn't really have to do a lot to this photo. Um, and that's the beauty of nighttime shots is, um, 
you know, you fix a few things and, you know, you want to keep it dark so you're not trying to brighten every aspect of it. I don't even add details everywhere because I just kind of want to focus your eye straight down the path. And I shot it dead on and, you know, a thousand people would tell you, don't center your subject or whatever. I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, that's fine. You don't have to, but I did and I liked it. Um, so anyway, structure, what I did is I bumped that up to 60, but I applied it with a radial mask. So let me show you the brush. Um and the mask. And so what I did is I just added it with a radial mask and um, put it in the center there and uh, that's what I did, right? So I just cranked up the detail there. Um, and then I did the same thing with Accent AI, which was to brighten it. And it's the same exact mask. You can just copy and paste that from one layer to the other. And in order to do that, you can go to the structure layer. Whoops. Um, you can come here and go to this and you can say mask copy, right? And then when you're ready, you come down to Accent AI filter and you say mask paste. Now it's not highlighted because I didn't just copy it now. I copied that earlier. But let me turn off these two. Remember the radial mask is right dead center in the image. So look at the um, center of that image. And now I'm going to add some detail with structure. Got a little crispier there. And then I'm going to add some brightness with Accent AI. So all I'm doing is drawing your eye down into the center of the frame. And that's one of the way I, ways I like to do it is with the Accent AI and structure on a radial mask in the same spot. Just something I like to do. Uh, next up was a vignette, and that was fairly heavy. I mean, negative 51, and the size is only 9, so it's a pretty tight one. But I also took inner light pretty significantly to the right. And so if you look at that again, there's the before. And if you look at, look at it now, even with the Accent AI that I added with the radial mask in the center, which brightened it quite a bit, now when I add vignette uh, to darken the edges plus add the inner light to brighten that center of it, it's really a whole lot brighter. And again... I'm purposefully creating a shadow on these two shop windows. Two reasons. Number one, uh, there's before the vignette. They're kind of bright and distracting to me, and I'm less inclined to look straight down. I kind of want to look at the windows and say, ooh, what's happening over there? Ooh, what's happening over there? Um, but now I'm less likely to do that because it's darker around there, and it centers me more in the center of the frame, which is where I'm trying to draw your eye down the, down the street, right? Um, the other thing is it creates more contrast with that yellow uh, in the window, so it makes it pop a little bit more. So before and after, because it's darker kind of around those windows, creates a little more contrast. I think it makes the image look a little bit better. Uh, and the last thing was a little HSL adjustment. So here I just took down the orange saturation, which is really that building at the end. Let me turn off the HSL. There's before. I don't know how well you can tell in the video. It's only negative 20. And there's after. It was getting a little too orange, so I just went in and took down that. It also impacts a little bit of those uh, windows that I was talking about, although they're more in the yellow spectrum. Uh, and then I took the purple and the magenta down as well to slightly reduce that purple cast that's still coming from those bulbs. So before, if you look like that window, that's this window up here, and here in the cobblestone streets, they're decidedly purplish pink. And now that I've taken those, the purple and magenta down, they're a lot less so. Uh, and that's really it. That's the entire workflow for that photo. It's just radial masks and filters and experimenting, you know, using vignette, using the AI and the, and the structure inside that radial mask to really pop that center of the photo and using vignette with the inner light to really darken the edges and brighten the center. And then, of course, color balance is a really big deal to really help you offset those cooler tones and warm it up a bit. And here's a before and after. If you look at it, I mean, it's a vastly different photo it really doesn't even look like the same thing to me. Um, you know, I would look at that at the back of my camera and say, yeah, it's purple, it's not bad. Even looking at it on, you know, my computer when I got home, I was like, yeah, not bad. But, you know, being curious uh, like I am, I wanted to get in there and say, well, can I make it something I really like? And this is something I really like. And to me, a lot more um, what I remember the scene being like. One more time, there's before and there's after. And that's how I do it, my friends. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope that it helps. Just a fun workflow walkthrough, but it's basically about taming the light and the color in night shots and taking back control because all the controls at your fingertips, these little filters and luminar give you so much power. Take advantage of it and have fun out there. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Have a great one. Take care and adios.